I think it's been really successful. I think there's been lots of really great conversations. Hi, I'm Ellie. And I'm Hannah. And today we're at the Media Innovation Studio, UCLan Preston, for a two-day learning summit that's been delivered and organised by Blaze in partnership with Curious Minds and Brighter Sounds. Inside, there are different organisations from across the whole of the Northwest that are here to share and develop ideas to create a perfect recipe for working with young people. Let's go check it out. My name's Angela Ball and I'm from Nosy Music and Performing Arts Service. Somewhere 2. Somewhere 2 is a national project we run in for the North West. Katrina Burke. I, um, I work at Tate Liverpool. I'm Esther Amos Hughes and I work at Leeds Museums and Galleries. I'm Jarrell. I'm, on, I'm here on behalf of Contact. I'm Kelly. I'm from Curious Minds. Um, we are the bridge organisation for the whole of the North West. I work for Brighter Sound and we provide music making opportunities for young people. I'm Russell. Um, I'm from Lancashire County Council Arts Development Team. I'm Nadine and I work for a live music production company in London called Sirius. With the support of our partner organisations um, and with the innovation and enthusiasm of young people, we've been able to grow Blaze from being just this tiny list into something huge which is affecting all of our lives. It's called uh, the World Cafe um, and we're discussing the question what does involvement in the culture and creative arts bring out in you? You've got to be, have that much confidence to take sarcasm. You can be childish, you can have your fun and everything, you can like really be creative but at the same time you're being like an adult. I think the creativity is absolutely yeah. there in young yeah, yeah, people yeah. and in terms of the planning process and the ideas that's all you know it just seems to be inherently there. What you guys have all done as part of Blaze and with contact is already showing that you've developed the knowledge of the sector you're working within an organisation and you've obviously got a huge passion because you've been given all of your free time to do it as well and you, you know you really, you know, you really want to Really We're working on lots of different questions about our feelings of the cultural sector, um, what we think we need in order to be successful. What does it mean to be alive at this point in time and dealing with the trials, tribulations and experiences that we're going through. Money is not just an investment, it shouldn't be just an investment in projects, it should be about people, so if you're doing that well, it's about interacting with people and a chance to kind of see success in people. So right now all the different tables are switching round, so the organisations are mixing up even more to share what they've just discussed and share it again with new people. So let's go see what's going on. We need to really be cementing some of these policies and there's been quite a lot of questions going through my mind, particularly particularly questions regarding age. So what really are the barriers to what we're doing? What really are the obstacles? And again, creative people are really brilliant at troubleshooting and, and finding different ways around things. So. Yeah, there's been some really sparky conversation today. Now we've split up into different groups and we're uh, sat around different tables discuss discussing different topics, such as uh, peer mentor, evaluation process, and uh, commissioning and uh, the programming side. Through different kinds of communication, yeah. And Facebook works here, but yeah. I suspect Facebook won't work because of the way that it's changed and the fact that there are other technologies out there. Now. So, I don't know what they are, so I don't know. But, you know, it worked for that moment and that period of time. Just been sat in there on the commissioning and programming uh, discussion, and just then we were talking about how the best way to communicate uh, with the group of people is. Be flexible, open to challenge, and um, don't be afraid if it's messy at times. Just that point to signpost, knowing that direction. So. Well, this group are doing a progressive routes, and um, how can we create successful progression routes for young people? So I've just I've just been listening in there, and one of the questions that came up was, um, do we plan ahead for the things that we're getting involved in, and do we know the effect that they're going to have on our sort of like career path or just our progression route? And I was thinking about this the other day, and just how one thing leads to another, and I've definitely been thinking more now about how to plan out the future route. Because we've all kind of learnt in our own way, you know, stumbled a lot along and, and learnt in bits and bats, is things like simple things like setting up a self-employment. I mean, jobs are one thing, but actually, how do you set up as a self-employed person? So whether you can create very simple toolkits that kind of break that down for young people to, to take them through the steps of doing that. Being able to have ownership and control over what it is that you do, just knowing that there is, so there's a focus point, and what you do towards that focus point is your choice. So creating exactly the right environment, and what is the difference between an environment where young people don't feel it's okay to just try stuff for the first time and what is it that we do and we do do it successfully but what is it that we're doing when young people are just happy to try stuff they've never done before. So I'm thinking about how I was um, uh, start joined Blaze and how I've seen other people join as well so it's quite an intro everyone's got a different story. Identified as being particularly important in engagement 
attention and recruitment was to have an opportunity to showcase. The sharing of mentors, so that there was something explicitly set up where if it was appropriate for an external mentor to be attached to a project. Here at the peer mentoring group where they're discussing how we can develop um, successful models of uh, mentoring that will enable young people to effectively share knowledge and skills. There has to be an appropriate matching and framework slash structure in place to support the relationship between the mentee and the mentor. It's always about the do, doing it up front, isn't it? And yeah. being proactive and all that stuff everyone says, but it's how do you actually make it part of what you do when you set a project up. We sat with the evaluation table and we were discussing uh, what do we need to effectively, uh, effectively evaluate young uh, people's experiences uh, within the projects that they're doing. We want to kind of get out of here today is this, as uh, Michael said, there's, there's some really fantastic ideas which have come up already, but we want more great ideas. So we as a strategic organisation in the Northwest can help link up all of that kind of great practice, get it out there, get more people working together in real, real more constructive ways um, with feedback from young people themselves. It takes over to the creative discussion because I think that's where I put myself and I want to find out what they're talking about and see if I can chip some, chip some in. <laughs> what are the things that you need? Is it a good team? Is it the money? Is it all like of your those cookbook. things? What are the ingredients? What are the ingredients? The, yeah. Okay, so what are the ingredients for great creative production? We talked about a need for transparency, trust, openness, communication. We need enthusiastic and open-minded people to including artists and, and other young people who are going to be involved with us. We need leaders who are motivated and dedicated to what they do and love their job. People are pairing up and uh, just having a walk around and having a really good reflect and think about how um, the, all the recommendations that we've made today uh, and all these insights, how can they be distributed to a wider sector? I mean, we don't want to create any more perhaps resources no. or any more Facebook yeah. pages. Yeah. Uh, you don't get that a lot when people, established people in the arts industry listening yeah. to younger generations. Yeah. And what we heard today, the conversation, the dialogue was great. It was really engaging. It is an ongoing process um, and it's about taking um, each phase of the project um, step by step. There's absolutely nothing that will explain anything as well as seeing what it's created. <laughs> so the more opportunity there is to take that on the road and for people to see what these projects, uh, you know, all the different facets of Blaze and any other project as has produced it, there's nothing else that will explain it as well as just seeing it. Online toolkits with fact sheets, videos, etc. So that links into the how-to videos. I also think that if you're going to use Twitter, it needs to be short, snappy, and to keep people interested. And also we felt that um, TV and radio was probably a good way to be going. It's really important that all the partners um, in, including the young producers, very specifically including the young producers, talk about Blaze at every possible opportunity that they get. Exchange visits. Um, on here it says from groups of young people, but we could do exchange visits with all sorts of projects and sectors and ideas where we invite them to come and tell us about what they do and we'll go and tell them what we do. Today's been fantastic for that, for sharing practice not just sharing practice with people who are professionally work in the profession, sort of older people, um, but also with young culture producers. It's been really, really exciting. So the networking, some, networking side of it is something that's very close to our heart as well. And what we'll do is that at the end of this session is that the, the ideas that come forward, the how do we actually share, how do we actually improve the actual sector or get the, the, the best parts of those sector out, sectors out to, to everybody else and highlight that. Is me and Deborah will kind of actually say we'll, we'll have a discussion, see which of those things we can actually take forward now. But it'll, what we'll do is we'll come together with all of those ideas that are uh, kind of pretty soon after the, the actual summit, and actually feed out back to all of you and all that kind of what type of things we want to propose, and bring you and hopefully bring you all in to kind of work with us on that as well. So. So that was an amazing two days of sharing the Blazers learning and, think, and getting le um, feedback back from other arts organisations. Fantastic project, it's a programme of work which hopefully has a legacy beyond 2012 and on to, on, onwards and upwards. Well obviously I'm going to talk about the cookbook which is an easy way to communicate what Blazers has, been, has been about. We've achieved so much and today I found out there's so much more we can achieve and I'm getting excited again to see what next.